good good morning good afternoon or good evening whatever time you are watching this 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 is chapter one of our our subject physics for engineers one units physical quantities and vectors by the way i'm your instructor engineer gladys grace restauro nari Okay, physics is a science of matter and its motion, as well as space and time. Physics is an empirical study. Also, physics is inherently a science of measurement. So, based on the definition, so we will be um, talking about, throughout this subject, science of matter and its motion. Just like, for example, we will be studying about Velocities. What is the velocity of a motorcycle from its initial position to it to, to its final position, or what is the displacement of a ball from its origin to its endpoint? So that's kind of motion. Or what are the effects of an impact by a baseball bat baseball bat and the ball? So that that kind of uh, situations or um, motions you know, everything that is in motion in space will be talking about will be talking about here in this subject okay so be ready for uh, this subject because it will be a very interesting subject and also, it is inherently a science of measurement. Of course, we'll be using uh, many kinds of uh, measurement. We'll be uh, constantly solving problems that involves physical quantities. And there will be um, measurements involved, measuring. So we will have our laboratory. We will do measurements measuring using measuring tools so let's proceed nature of physics okay mathematics is very important here in physics so math is the language we use to discuss science so without math we will not be able to understand physics although physics is built on top of mathematics and serves as a foundation for other sciences sciences Okay, so this is the physical system. There are four uh, types of physical uh, systems, mechanical, thermal, optical, electrical, and we will be uh, discussing this, you know. We will be discussing the mechanical, thermal, and then the optical. I think the electrical part is in the physics for engineers too. Measurement. It is the process of estimating the ma magnitude of some attribute of an object, such, such as its length or weight. So when you say measurement, you measure a physical quantity. For example, your height, for example, five, six feet. So that's a measurement of your height. Or, uh, for example, the weight, uh, weight uh, mass, mass rather, for example, the mass, uh, 50 kilogram. So that's that kind of um, measurement. Physical quantity, so any number or sets of numbers used for quantitative description of a physical phenomenon. phenomenon. So uh, any number that uh, describes a physical quantity or that is used for a quantitative description, for example, how tall are you? So how would you describe that? How would you describe a man using its height so you should use a number and then with the unit for example five six feet or you say 1.5 meters so that's the example of physical quantity solving physics problems so learning how to learn physics concept will be your first and perhaps most difficult task 
of course, you have to understand the physics concept for you to be able to solve problems. And for me to evaluate you, if you understand the concept, uh, you will solve problems. Of course, I will show you examples so that you will have a guide. There's also examples uh, in the book that I've gave you, the University of Physics. You, you can also study the examples there. Okay, based on that book by Dr. Young and Dr. Fredman, these are the strategies to be used in solving physics problems. First, you identify the relevant concepts. Of course, you, are you identify the target variables, what is the given. What, what, what are you solving for? What will you solve? What are you trying to, to get? Okay, so that's identifying. Next, is set up the problem. What equation should you use? to solve the problem. And then third, this is where you do the math. So execute the solution. And then evaluate, evaluate your answer. Compare your answer with your estimates and reconsider things if there's a discrepancy. So that's the strategy that is suggested to us by Dr. Yang and Dr. Fredman to identify, set up, ex execute, evaluate units to express the results of measurements so as the just uh, like I said earlier uh, you can describe a physical quantity with a number but you should put a unit in it so for example how how far are you from your initial position to your final position or how far did you walk? So that kind of uh, physical quantity. Okay, this uh, this is table 1.1. Some units of length, mass, and time. So familiarize this because uh, you will be using this units all throughout the subject. Okay, there are also physical quantities which have mixed dimension. For example, velocity. Okay, this V here is a velocity. A velocity is equal to velocity equal to distance. D is distance over time. The unit of distance is meters or kilometers or miles. The unit of time is seconds, minutes, or hours. Okay, so the velocity could be meter per second or kilometer per hour or miles per hour. Conversion. You could convert a unit from two different uh, system of units from system in uh, interna international system or what we known as the metric unit of systems to British system or British system of units to international system of units. For example, kilometer, you'll convert it to feet, or inch, you will convert it to centimeter, or miles, you'll convert it to kilometer. So that's the conversion of units. So this is what I said, two kinds of system of units, international system or metric system, bridge system. Okay, for the unit of length, we'll be using meter. Unit of mass, kilogram. Unit of time, second. For the British system, unit of length, foot, unit of mass, pound, unit of time, second. Okay. Experimental measurements. Okay. It is always uncertain, but, is, but it was always hoped that by designing a better and better experiment, we can improve the uncertainty without limits. So that's experimental measurements. Theoretical estimates. As the word itself self says, estimates so, estimates, so it is just a theoretical predictions which are never exact. Okay, a, tool, a useful tool in such estimates is known as order of magnitude estimate or also known as outcome or back of the envelope calculations. Okay, so we'll have example. 
This example that I'll be giving you is found in the end of the chapter 1 in the University Physics book. And there is also many problems there that you can solve. So try practicing so that uh, you will able to understand past the concepts of physics. Okay, example, this is problem 1.2. According to the label on a bottle of salad dressing, the volume of the contents is 0 0.472 liter. Using only the conversions, 1 liter equals to 1,000 cubic, cubic centimeter and 1 inch equals to 2.54 centimeter. Express this volume in cubic inches. Okay, so the given here is 0 0.470 liters. So you will, you will going to convert this liter to cubic inch and then what are the uh, given information one liter equals to 1000 cubic centimeter and then one inch equals to 2.54 centimeters okay so I have here the solution okay so first based on the strategy suggested to us we have to identify so convert volume units from liter to cubic inch and then set up set up so the information here is is just from the uh, word problem so one liter equals to 1000 cubic centimeter one inch equals to 2.54 centimeter and then do the math execute so 0 0.472 liters times for every one liter there is 1000 cubic centimeter times for every one inch there is 2.54 centimeter but we have raised it to cube since we are looking for a cubic inch so that we could come up to a cubic inch in our execution so this is our uh, equation okay so liter will be cancelled because there is a uh, this quantity here is divided by a liter and then cubic centimeter will be cancelled because a, centimet a cubic centimeter here is divided to cubic inch so cancel cancel so the remaining unit will be cubic inch so the answer is 28.9 cubic inch and then evaluate what do you analyze so one cubic inch is greater than one cubic centimeter so the volume in cubic inch is a smaller number than the volume in cubic centimeter which is 473 cubic centimeter okay that's the solution for problem 1.2 another example it is 1.6 problem 1.6 in the book a square field measuring 100 meter by 100 meter has an area of one hectare an area has an an acre rather an acre has an area of 43,600 square feet if a lot has an area of 12 acres what is its area in hectares okay so the given here there is 100 meter by 100 meter that is just equal to 1 hectare so 100 times 100 that is 10,000 square meter so 1 hectare is 10,000 square meter However, the, an acre, one acre, equals to 43,600 square feet. So what we are looking for is 12 acres converted to hectares. So the solution is here. First, identify, convert uh, square feet to square meters and then to hectares. Set up. Okay, so... The information in the setup is from the um, from the word problem. So, one hectare is uh, one hectare equals to ten thousand square meter. That is ten thousand one ta one times ten to the power of four square meter. One feet equals to zero point three zero four eight meter, and one acre equals to forty three thousand six hundred square feet. And then do the math, execute. So the answer is 4.86 hectares.
evaluate since one feet equals to 0 0.3048 meters so one square feet equals to 0 0.3048 square square meters so that's it for our example any question clarification you can message me DM me quiz will be posted in Google Classroom so please uh, check your uh, classroom thanks for listening